about who is Jesus. Now, I, I was telling Victoria here a little bit ago before service, and I said, you know, I said I was, I was kind of, I was on YouTube probably I don't know three or four days before service, you know, and uh, I got thinking like, who is Jesus? So I, I, mean, I know who Jesus is, but don't, <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm just saying. That didn't come out right. But anyways, uh, but I, I typed in who is Jesus, and I wanted to see some of the street interviews and on what other people, who they thought Jesus was. And although there's, there might be a couple of these that are kind of, they're just ridiculous on what some of these people think who Jesus is. I'm just going to be honest. But you know what? The, the, the thing about it was is that this thing, like, it really broke my heart because there are so many people that are out there and they literally are clueless about who Jesus is. And that just means, and I'm not going to try and preach before I show this, but the, or before Jared shows this, but the fact is is that we, the church, are responsible. It's not God that's responsible. It's us. We are the ones who bring the message of the gospel to the world. Jesus done did his part. It's over. What he did is done. So you know what? Now it's our time. And now we, we've, got a, we've, got a, we've got a message here, guys. A life-changing message. And Jesus is the central figure. He's the only one. That's who we preach. It's not us. It's him. So before... See, this thing just makes me want to preach. But how are we... Are we all right on that? Oh, okay. So just watch this. That's a tough question. He's the main guy for Christianity, I guess. He's cool. Jesus Christ. Who is he to you? He's just Jesus, man. I don't know. He's just... This is a cool guy, man. He's awesome. A carpenter from 2,000 years ago. A Jew, definitely. And yeah, he was a reformer, but I don't believe him to be the Messiah at all. Now, who do you believe Jesus Christ to be? Ooh, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. I mean, I believe he existed, um, but I believe that he might have been like a rock star, like, you know, pretty cool. Like, maybe he, people thought he was super cool, but I don't believe in him as like a religious force. He's a person in history. That's all. It's a comfy story that probably makes people feel secure. Who do I believe Jesus Christ to be? Like, what kind of question is that? Who is, is, he, to, is he anything to you at all? Or? What's your I mean, he's a religious figure. He uh, had, I mean, he obviously had a good message to send. I don't know if I, he's not my savior, but he's, he was a good guy, for sure. Jesus Christ to be. I think Jesus Christ pretty much is um, who you believe yourself to be. I think Jesus Christ was a magician. I mean, he studied, you know, he studied in the Far East. Kind of like David Blaine, but like he had way cooler tricks. He's a dead man um, who uh, had an enormous impact on the world, right? uh, said a lot of wise things, um, and uh, was the man of his time. He's like God that you can talk to, I guess. Like, oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, God that you can talk, God to. That you can talk to. I mean, when I pray, I pray. I just say, like, God, and I say, like, thank you, Jesus. But, yeah, I think that they're both kind of listening. It's kind of like conference call. <laughs> Who do you believe Jesus Christ to be? Jesus Christ? Uh, I don't know, the Savior? <laughs> Guy from history. Who is Jesus Christ? John McCain is Jesus Christ. I, I believe in the historic personage of Jesus, but I don't, I don't really buy into the water and to wine. A person, that, a historical figure, that's it. To me, he's a guy that I guess he, he started... <laughs> A, a thing with some people, and uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it turned into something he didn't intend, and uh, you know that sucks. But um, you know, he meant he meant well. I think Jesus Christ is everybody. Everybody? Um, yeah. I don't know. I think everyone. I think that everyone has a little bit of Jesus in them, or God, or something like that. No, I believe in God, but I don't know who it is. I just think I just think it's, it's someone uh, above us, you know. Jesus Christ is. I mean, obviously a very important historical figure, but for me, that's kind of where it ends. He definitely did not die for my sins. 
Mm -hmm. Maybe existed. I don't believe that he's going to save me or any of this sort. But I don't mind that other people believe that. I don't believe in Jesus Christ. I don't believe there is such a person. I actually don't know yet. Um, it's just something that I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I believe in and what, me what it really means to me to even have a religion right now. Mm. That's that's what people think. Um So if we were to So Jesus was a magician. Jesus was John McCain. So I bet Maybe, I don't know, maybe 60% of you guys don't even know who John McCain is. It doesn't matter. Um, he was a historical figure. Um, he was a rock star. Back in his day, he was a rock star. Um, I guess if you want to get specific, that works. But, you know, but... The fact of the matter is, is that these people are clueless on who Jesus is. And, you know, if, if we kind of look back 20 years ago, I bet we would get a lot of different answers. I think they'd be a lot different than what we just saw. And I got to be honest, guys, hearing this really did break my heart. Because this is America. We are the ones that 90% of the gospel comes from here. And we go out into the world. 90% comes from America and we go out to the world. And we have people in America that believes that Jesus was a magician. It's Honestly, it's a sad thing. I mean, I know we kind of joke and laugh about it, but the fact is, guys, is it's a sad thing. This is what prompted me to, to start this series on who is Jesus. Because here's the thing. You guys are the ones who carry the gospel message. Yes, it's me. Yes, it's Pastor. Yes, it's Pastor Tom. But hey... We, all of us, all of us, we should know what the gospel is. So that way we don't have ridiculous answers like that. Because whenever they're saying, who is Jesus, and they're talking to you, I'm, I'm telling you guys, you might be getting hit at your school on who Jesus really is. So the question is, what are you going to say? Who is Jesus to you? I know we have some, some of you in here and you're younger, you're kind of new, you don't understand everything and that's fine. And you've been in here and you've, you've tasted the presence of, and seen and felt the presence of God. And let me tell you something, that is, that is one of the coolest things in the world. But if you don't know the one who brings the presence, there's a problem. Because you can't enjoy something that, that someone's given you and not know the person, not know the one. Amen? We have to know this. Whenever people are talking to you in their, at the school and talking to you at your job or talking to you wherever, you have to know what this gospel is. You have to know. I have some scriptures for you tonight, and Jared may not be able to, to pull up all of these for us because he's got he's to leave a little earlier, but well, let's start with Matthew chapter 16. Amen. We're going to start in Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to start in verse 13. Amen. And the word says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people 
say the Son of Man is. So now he's talking to his guys, the guys that have been with him. The guys that have seen him do all the miracles, the guys that have have watched him and been there, and, and Jesus has been the one that has been mentoring them. He's been discipling them. He's been showing them. He's been guiding them. He's been teaching them. This is his guys. And he's saying, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Verse 14 says, they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But then he gets a little personal and he says, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And I think that the Lord is asking this question here tonight to you. Maybe some others have been saying, Jesus is a magician. Jesus is a historical figure. Jesus was a reformer, but I don't believe that he's... He's the Son of Man. I don't believe that He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But who do you say that Jesus is? It's important to know that. You guys need to know who Jesus is. Verse 16, Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then verse 17, Jesus replies, he said, Blessed are you, Simon, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not overcome it. It might say, the version I have says the gates of Hades. Your version might say the gates of hell will not overcome it. Hmm. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Now here's here's kind of what I want to get to right here. Was kind of verse 17 where he says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that, Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now I know we've kind of, we might have talked about this before, but what was Jesus saying to him? The fact is, is that Peter got a real deep understanding, we call that revelation, on who Jesus was or is. And Peter just nailed it. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. And he was saying... Man has not revealed this to you, but God has revealed to you. And, and I will build my church on this. And what was that? That was the revelation. That was the understanding on who Jesus really is. It's not enough to have just information. You've got to get what we call revelation, which is deep understanding, which is I know that I know. If I come to you and I got a red apple and I say, you know, what is this? You might say, well, it's an apple. But someone says, well, no, that's a red apple. That's deep understanding on what this is. And this is what Jesus was saying to his guys. Is that I want you to know that you know who I am. Because you're going to face a world that doesn't believe in me that doesn't know me, that doesn't understand me, and that I've got to have someone that's got my back. And the question I want to ask you guys tonight is, do you got his back? If you got ten of your friends and they're telling you and they're mocking Jesus and they're laughing at Christianity and the God that you serve, do you have his back? It's a tough question. It's not easy to go against the flow of everybody else. It's not easy to say, well, you know what? I know who he is. He's my Lord and my Savior. That's not easy. Especially when you got people mocking him and and making fun of him. But I'm telling you, it's important that you have his back. It's important that you have understanding who he is to you. 
Um, there's going to be another video that I'm going to show next week, but they were, in the video they are explaining, it's not important that I just know who he is, but it's important that you know who he is. Who is he to you? Because you know what? I can go in front of an atheist and I can tell him who I think Jesus is. But it doesn't matter. What it matters is what he believes. Amen. What do we believe? What do we believe? So tonight I just want to cover two aspects. There's going to be more. But I want to cover two aspects on who is Jesus. The first one is he is the son of God. Everybody say he's the son of God. Jesus is indeed the son of God. I want to turn here. I'm going to only be in two books of the Bible tonight. It's, in, in, it's going to be in Matthew. It's going to be in John. It's going to be real easy for you tonight. Matthew chapter 3. Y'all doing all right tonight? Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17. Jesus was getting baptized. And here in verse 17, and, and it says, And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. That was God the Father speaking to the Son. He was saying he is the son. Amen? Y'all with me tonight? John chapter 11. I'm going to kind of go through this a little quick. Because the, my next point is, is going to be, a, it's going to be a, a home run on who Jesus is. Amen. John chapter uh, 11 and verse 27. No, verse 17. I'm sorry. Y'all just help me. Lord, help me. I'm just... I got so much. All right. It says, On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Mm. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Verse 21. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Verse 23. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus corrects her in verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live. Even though he dies and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And then she, she ends up here in verse 27. Yes, Lord, she told him, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. You know what's really important about these verses whenever... They were, they were tripping on Jesus because that Lazarus had been dead four days. And he, they thought Jesus was late. But the fact is, is that Jesus was just on time. Because the, in, in the way Judaism believes and what they believe is that, that whenever a person dies, that their spirit hovers around that body for three days. So why did Jesus come on the fourth day? Yeah. He didn't want them to doubt for one second. He wanted them to know who he was and just how powerful he was. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He could have been in there ten days and he would have raised them up. Hmm. Second point I want to get to tonight. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Of the world. He's not just the Savior in Lincoln. He's the Savior of the world. He lived and he died and he rose again because he is the Savior of the world. People can still be saved tonight. John chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17, and we, we, we've heard this so much and we know this. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave 
His one and only Son, or the, the other uh, version may say, His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not pa- perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Jesus is the Savior of the world. There is no other way. There is no other way to heaven but through Him. It isn't Buddha. It isn't Allah. It isn't any other God. It is Jesus that is the Savior of this world, guys. There ain't nobody else that can save you. He's already done it, but you've got to accept it. The price has been paid, but you have to accept it for you. Jesus has already done everything for us that we need. Let me say that again. Jesus has already done everything for us that we need. Because he died and he rose again. The price has been paid for you and me. And for all, oh my gosh. Man, if we could just get a hold of this tonight. If we can just get a hold of this, because a lot of times we just think, man, if I'm just a good person, man, if I can just do this, or if I dress this way, or if I do this, or if I do that, then he can accept me. But no, you just got to accept him for who he is. You just got to say, Lord, you know what? I turn my life over to you. I'm no longer going to do my will, but I'm going to do your will. I turn my life, I turn my everything over to you for now on. That is the gospel. Lord, I repent of the things that I have done. I accept your will. I accept your way for now on. Cleanse me once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 6, verses 39 and 40. And the word says, And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at that last day. This is the will of God. The will of God was to send the Son to live, to die, and to be risen. Amen. On the third day, for all of mankind, for every generation. Why? Because the Lord knew that we couldn't do it on our own strength. We couldn't do things our own way. If we had to live right now by the law, Lord Jesus, help us. We would all be in trouble. Do you hear what I'm saying? If we had to live by the Ten Commandments to be a righteous person, it ain't happening. There ain't no way. And guess what? God's smart enough to know that. Thank the Lord for Jesus. John chapter 10 and verse 27. Hallelujah. Oh, man, this... Oh, glory. Hallelujah. John chapter 10 and verse 27. Amen. He says, Jesus speaking, he said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. (laughs) No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one shall snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Jesus said, I give them eternal life. It is through Christ and Christ alone. Come on, we cannot think we're going to do this thing on our own and have success. We got to turn our life over to the Lord. Amen. Amen. John chapter 14, and I'm, I'm getting ready to close. 
It's a very simple scripture. 14.6, and Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Through me. That's Jesus speaking. It's through him. It's not any other way. It's not your good morals that's going to get you in heaven. It's not by you coming to church that's going to get you to heaven. It's not by coming to every single service and showing up 15 minutes early that's going to get you in heaven. You could be buried underneath this church and still go to hell. You guys hear what I'm saying tonight? So many times we think, man, if I can just be good enough, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. Anytime you just think, man, it's just going to be by me being morally good. And, man, if I'm just a good person and if I give to the money to, to, the, to the man, to the homeless man, if I can just give him some money, then the Lord's going to look down on me and give me grace and mercy. No, it's through the Son. It is through the Son of God. The moral things are a byproduct. That's the fruit that should come after you're born again. Because once you become born again, then you should want to do these things. Amen? If you'd stand up tonight, please. I just want to end with this note here. Jesus wasn't just a teacher, a prophet, a leader. He was so much more. And you know what? These, some of these, some of the shirts and stuff that I see is just an absolute mockery of who he is. You know, I know it's cool whenever, you know, you know that we, a lot of Hollywood are wearing these shirts that, oh, Jesus is my homeboy and s- stupid stuff. I mean, come on. He's more than that. You know what we do whenever we wear stuff like that and do stuff like that? We dumb him down is what we do. We bring him down to a level that he's not even at. Because he's up here. And what we try to do is we try to bring him down. Hollywood is trying to bring him down. He's on a different level. He did so much more. He died for my sin. He died for my junk, for my stuff that I did wrong. And he died for your sin and all the stuff that you did. It was your sin and my sin that nailed him to the cross. That's a fact. So whenever we hear that we've heard three minutes and 40 seconds of, it's nonsense. He's more than that.